Hello, gunfighters. Welcome to Gunfighter Life, the podcast where we talk about gunfighting the right way with Judeo Christian values and real world first hand experience. Today, we're going to be talking about slings. Before we get into today's topic, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a review of the podcast. And I hope you'll check out goodshepherdtraining.com. I'm going to plug in the bio. If you want to, skip around 3 minutes and 45 seconds from where it starts. If you want to get to the body of the episode. Who am I? First and foremost, I'm a servant of God and a follower of Jesus Christ. God is number one in my life, and everything that I do in this podcast is no different, and I don't apologize for that. A little bit about me in the background. I grew up, I guess what you would consider a heathen. Didn't grow up a Christian, but I grew up in the southeastern United States, what most would consider very poor. Hunting and fishing and shooting. Joined the Marine Corps at 17, did a couple of combat tours in Iraq. After my combat tours in Iraq, I was an urban warfare instructor for the United States Marine Corps under Mojave Viper. I also served in law enforcement for several years in LAPD. I worked patrol assignments and more specialized assignments. Where by God's grace, he got me through some nasty places in this world of war zones. And some of the nastiest streets in the country. Not because I am better, because God chose that mercy on me and had a purpose for me. And I'm thankful for that. After my time in law enforcement, I was a private contractor for federal government for a three-letter government agency I won't specify, doing private contracting work. I'm very much involved in guns and gunfighting. I also served in the U.S. Army, both full-time and part-time National Guard. I should say my primary MOS is in both branches of the military or infantry as of one sort or another. Specialized infantry in the Marine Corps and an MOS that no longer exists. I started competition shooting even before I joined the Marine Corps at 17. I won my first gold medal even before I joined the Marine Corps at 17. I've been blessed by God with the talents he's given me to win more shooting competitions than I can remember. I've won most of my competitions in rifle and pistol, but I've also competed in archery and shotgun and even muzzleloader. Uh, Knife throwing, hatchet throwing, I've competed in all that. I've also been a professional big game hunter and guide. Like I said, I grew up hunting and and fishing and shooting. I've done it to put meat on the table because I like to put food on the table with the talents God's given me. I don't apologize for that. I've done it as a professional hunter and guide. I've slain all manner of beast and guided for all manner of beast. Bear and wolf and elk and deer mule deer, a white-tailed deer, I've slain ram and fallow deer and countless animals, and I don't apologize for that either. FBI certified firearms instructor, NRA, and a bunch of other three-letter government agency certifications. Blessed be the Lord my rock who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle, Psalm 144. I've been blessed to be the commander of a tactical team, an SRT special response team in a large metropolitan area where our primary job was to stop active shooters. But again, first and foremost, I'm a servant of God, called by God to share the good news, preacher, a fisher of men. So let's get into today's topic. As you might imagine, growing up, I used a sling. As I mentioned, I started competition shooting at a very early age, and I used a sling. I used just a leather military loop sling, and those are great for competition shooting. They are a great stabilizing sling. They are a great all-around sling. They're obviously a military sling. Now, they can be used as just a simple sling that connects on the top and bottom of your rifle and you use it to put it on your shoulder use it for marching use it for covering ground they also can be quite complex in the way they're configured to wrap around your bicep 
to be adjusted and different loop sizes for different positions, prone versus kneeling versus offhand. Of course, if you're trained to know how to do all these things. We also had a little brass stop sometimes that we would put on there to get even more stability. And the one I'm referring to, there's probably different names, but a World War I leather sling or a 1907 pattern sling are a very common vernacular apparently for those style of slings. Now when we started the war in Iraq, you might think from looking at all the tactical gear today that we had all kinds of whiz-bang fancy stuff. But we started the war, I started with an old beat up M16A2 that looked like it had been drugged behind a Humvee for quite a while. It was probably more silver than black on the metal. And we had regular old World War II M1 Garand type web canvas OD green military slings. The same kind used for drill, the same kind used for marching, the basic military slings. That's what we were issued. That's what we had. Now, if you were in combat, you quickly realized that probably wasn't the best sling for tactical use. So what a lot of us would do is take that sling. This is a little bit of you know military history for you guys that weren't around and serving then. But we would take that web sling and loop it around and use the metal clip on it and clip it on the back of our M16A2s. And we would hang that down, kind of like tactical bling, like our M16 was our giant wrapper chain it would just be around our neck or maybe under one shoulder if it was long enough and that was just so we could have the weapon up in front of us to come up on target quickly and also so somebody couldn't grab it if we were doing cqb and shoot us with our own gun it was basically taking that old web military sling and using it as a quasi single point sling now if you were super tactical you know if you were the operator high speed low drag guy back in the day you'd get two you'd you know figure out a way to get two of those military web slings and you would run one from the front of the rifle to the back like the regular sling and make it semi tight and then you would take your other sling and make a loop on the back of that making your own de facto three point sling and that was quite a big improvement you'd actually sling it and have it across your chest in front of you and that's what we had we made do we cut pieces of 550 cord and wrapped it around the stock or tied it in around the handguard through the front sight post. There was all manner of ways we rigged things up because we made do with what we had. We were Marine Corps infantry. We were not Navy SEALs. We didn't have the latest and greatest gear. We had what we had. That was an M16A2 with a web sling, a military green web sling. All that having been said, you can do a lot with minimal gear. And tactical slings have come a long way. There are probably several subcategories and nuances, but let's break the tactical type slings into three categories. One point slings, two point slings, and three point slings. Now one point sling obviously attaches to the rifle at one point. The rifle is basically a big loop, you know, a big circle, and may or may not have a little straight piece that connects to the rifle. It may just be a loop with that comes into one piece and attaches to the rifle, but it attaches at one point to the rifle. It's a single point sling or a one point sling. So what are these good for and not good for? Well, they're good for not getting shot with your own gun by somebody else. They make it hard for somebody to grab your gun out of your hands and shoot you with it. That's, a, that's an important thing. That's not to be overlooked. They are good for that. They are quick to put on and quick to take off again not to be overlooked that is can be quite an advantage that you roll up on the scene of something in a vehicle and people just start unloading and shooting and you need to grab that gun real fast and get it on you can just throw that single point sling over your shoulder like a police officer might do in a traffic stop if you know things got hot and heavy or a police officer rolling up to the scene of an active shooter or something like that. Something where he has to get that gun on him quickly and he wants a way for that gun not to be taken away from him. So if he just needs to have both hands free for just a minimal amount of time, say he's doing a, a room entry and the guy in front of him gets shot and he has to drag him out. Well now he can just let that rifle sling or throw it behind his back, literally spin it around him 
and now he can drag his buddy out of that room and get cover, or at least concealment. Throw a tourniquet on. These are real things that happen all the time. So a single point sling is quick to put on, which is good, and also stops somebody. It, it doesn't stop, but it makes it much harder for somebody to grab your gun out of your hands and shoot you with it, turn it back around on you. And it lets you have both hands free for a short amount of time. What single point slings are not good for? They are not good for any kind of long distance movement. You would not want one on a patrol. You would not want one, you know, let's say on a military patrol where you're covering lots of ground and the rifle is slung a majority of the time. In fact, I'd say an old school web sling is probably better for that. They're not good for that. So they're not good for any kind of tactical movement. They're not good for if you're going to have your rifle slung for long periods of time. Let's just say you're stuck on post. You're going to be standing there watching something, watching an area for four hours, eight hours. They are not good for that. They're not good for if the rifle has to be slung and you have to run any kind of distance. If you have to run, you generally have to grab that rifle and hold it even with the sling around you because that's going to fly and flop all over the place. So those are the, some of the pros and cons of the single point sling. I guess another pro would be they're light, they're small, they're kind of minimalist. If you, Let's say you have a kel Sub-2000 in your trunk and you just want a sling on it in case you have to throw it on. Not get shot with your own gun. Just have a way to hang it down to have both hands free. In case you have to throw on a tourniquet or something and don't want to drop your gun. They're good for that. They're a good minimalist sling. So if you don't anticipate any kind of long distance movement or running or anything like that you just want a very minimalist sling they can be good for that as single point slings the next is a two point sling and i'm not really talking about the web slings anymore or the old 1907 leather leather slings although those are military slings and there are two point slings but more modern two point slings that may attach with a qd attachment or some kind of other awesome tactical m lock super space age thing that attaches to somewhere in the front of the rifle and somewhere in the back of the rifle and this can vary greatly depending on personal preference all the way from the very back of the stock to somewhere where the stock meets the receiver all the way to the end of the hangar that runs all the way to the front of the rifle to any number of inches back on the handguard so this is a relative term front and back of rifle but the front one's going to attach somewhere front of the receiver and the rear one's going to attach somewhere rear of the receiver. And a lot of this is going to depend on your rifle setup, the type of stock you have, the type of handguard that you have, full length or, you know, carbine length. If you've got a fancy one, they are quickly adjustable for length. So what are the advantages of a two-point sling? Well, two-point slings are good for movement. They are good for covering long distances. They are good for being on patrol. They are good for sucking that rifle in close to your chest if you are going to run or sprint or something like that with a long gun. They are good for that. They can be a little bit harder to put on and adjust, so a little bit longer to get set up, especially if you don't know exactly the way that you want it most single point slings are like a set length and you just throw them on and that's basically it they may or may not be elastic all intents and purposes you just throw them on a two point sling you have to put on and adjust now if you always run the same body armor or run the same kit the same chest rig you might have a sharpie marker on there or something to know exactly how you want it you may just keep it on the biggest setting so you can just throw it on and adjust it when and if you have time but let's say in general they do take a little bit longer to deploy than a single point sling. But they are much better for tactical movement, whether that's just walking, clearing rooms, and especially for running. They are better for that. Some of the disadvantages, again, they, they're adjustable normally, which can be an advantage or a disadvantage. Sometimes simpler is better. Find it's too tight for this thing and too loose for that thing, and then before I start running I have to clinch it up real tight. Or, this is real common, you start getting into more tactical training, you'll shoot with right side, your, your strong dominant side, which for most people is right side. And if you want to switch to shooting your long gun on your left shoulder, shooting it from your off side, then that's hard to do with a two-point sling. You have to do all kinds of adjustment, where with a single-point sling, you normally just throw it over your other shoulder. So it's less ambidextrous without adjustment, 
that can be a pain in the butt. And you'll see a lot of guys that do this if they're going to run that two-point sling and shoot ambidextrously a lot. They go back to what we were doing in Iraq where it's kind of that tactical bling and it just hangs around your neck, which again is not great. So to sum it up, a little bit harder to deploy, a little bit harder to maneuver with as far as strong and weak shoulder and different kinds of body armor and kit. A little bit slower to deploy, but much, much better for any kind of tactical movement, especially when you get into running or doing anything where you don't have your hands. Much better, you know, if you're going to be standing somewhere for a long period of time and have that rifle supported where you don't have to hold it. Which I guess will bring us to the three-point sling. To me, the three-point slings are not bad per se. They're just more complicated than is necessary. Now, I have one of these. Again, I talked about back in the Iraq days. Well, when we started to progress a little bit past the military web slings and doubling those up and using 550 cord and all kinds of crazy stuff, Back in the early aughts, you know, Blackhawk was the tactical company of the day. And they made all the high-speed cool guy kit back in the day. And I don't remember whether it was issued or I bought it with my own money, but we got the three-point Blackhawk slings that went on the M16A2 with an extra magazine holder on the stock. And that was pretty tactical back in the day when you went from a web sling to that. It's kind of like going from a Taibo VHS tape back in the day to being a ninja. If any of you are around to live through the Taibo craze. But it was a three-point sling, and it wasn't a bad sling. And I don't think three-point slings are bad. I just think they're more complex than is necessary. I think they were kind of a way to adapt rifles that were born in an age when tactical slings weren't a thing and adapting them to that. If you just have a stock M16A1, M16A2, there's not a lot of good ways, at least there wasn't then, to attach just a tactical high-speed two-point sling we have today. There wasn't these QD, M-lock, you know, there wasn't even a quad rail. You had a front and a rear sling swivel. Not even a swivel, you had a front and a rear, you had a front sling swivel and a rear just hard metal grommet in the back to attach a web sling to, and that was it. That three-point sling was a way to let you get a tactical sling on an M16A2. But if you have a rifle, a modern sporting rifle, a modern AR with more modern things on it, there are better ways. And I think the three-point sling is not bad. It's just overly complicated and superfluous for what is needed today and the task at hand. Thus far, we've talked about the tactical sling. And... Just a little aside here, I guess I don't really think about it because you know, I'm me and I look at most things through the lens of my training and experience. But there's kind of two big circles in the shooting community. The There's kind of your classical gun culture from days of yore. You know, hunting with your beautiful blued steel and walnut pre-64 Winchester Model 70. You know, maybe walking around with a Jones hat and a plaid flannel shirt and some canvas pants or tin pants under your classic Americana hunting from days of yore and then you have your super cool modern tactical black rifle and Glock 19 with your molly and your M-lock and your red dot sights your three gun and your USPSA and recoil magazine. And you have these two big circles. And if you think of a Venn diagram. And the overlap. There is a very small amount of overlap. And see I love both those worlds. I have, I do both those things. I go out hunting. Plan on going out coyote hunting tomorrow. I've been blessed to win more shooting competitions than I can remember. I'm all about good, useful new technology making more effective gunfighters. So I guess uh, it seems to me odd that most people are in one of those circles or the other, and there's very few overlap. And I wish there was more. I think that's one of the reasons, hopefully, that you guys find this podcast unique, that I talk about both those worlds. So let's transition into that other world and talk about hunting slings. Kind of your quintessential classic would be just that 
Originally military sling, but originally 30 out 6 was a military cartridge adapted for hunting. Just that leather 1907 style sling is a fine, fantastic hunting sling. Likewise, the web sling, both of which are very good if you know how to use a sling for stability, to make a hasty sling or to make a loop sling. I'm not talking about the kind of hunting where you drive up in a quad with your 20 pound rifle and set it on a tripod and shoot an elk at a thousand yards. I'm not putting that down. Any way you go and put meat on the table yourself as a man is good. That's just not what I'm talking about or how I hunt. I'm talking about, you know, stalking up close or still hunting. Being able to make a hasty sling or a loop sling. And also having that sling useful for carrying or dragging that deer out once you've shot it. Both the classic web sling and the 1907 slings, leather slings, are great for that. And there's your more tailored towards yes your sporting hunting rifle hunting shotgun and that's just going to be a very basic sling a lot of sporting guns will come with sling swivel studs attachments on them in the forearm in the stock it's your classic kind of quintessential uncle mike's quick detach sling swivel attaches the sling to those little grommets in your rifle those little studs that screw into your rifle the top of that sling is going to be big and wide and padded and the bottom is just going to be a narrow strap you generally use that for carrying your gun muzzle up walking through the woods they're padded on the shoulder for when you're carrying that rifle for long periods of time and they're great for that they're great slings and that's kind of what you would expect to see on a classic you know pre-64 winchester model 70 and 30-06 with a beautiful walnut stock and beautiful deep bluing expect to see a sling like that probably made out of leather doing some engraving or some basket weaving on it it'd be very at home on that rifle they're beautiful and they're practical and they work you can make a hasty sling with those they're not the best or not as good as the previous two slings we talked about but they work If you're into the scout rifle scout rifles have their own slings and we did an entire episode on scout rifles thanks to one of the patrons who's big into scout rifles uh, the ching sling and the rhodesian sling now i personally don't have any experience with those but they do exist and they are a thing and they're kind of tactical hunting sling a quick deploy more steady a traditional web sling and forgive me like i said that's something i have a lot of first-hand experience with but I, that's the way i understand it a quickly deployable more stable sling and way to carry your rifle for the scout rifle and then if you're talking about survival rifles one of the things that i really like are are the tactical paracord slings because if you're going to carry a sling if it's made of paracord that can be useful for a lot of other things if you get stuck out in the bush and you need paracord also fire cord that can be made into pair slings which is used to make fire and they make some with flammable materials and they make some with fishing string in there. The slings made of that, you can make it yourself or you can have somebody make them. To get any kickback from this guy, on Instagram there's a guy, Paralyzed Paracord. Never met the guy in person, but his advertisement thing is he's a paralyzed guy that makes cool things out of paracord. I had him make me a sling. I was a professional hunter and it's still on my Kimber, my Kimber Hunter in 308 and it's a good sling. I'd say it was a little overbuilt. It's a lot of paracord in that thing. You could probably make a a couple of bushcraft shelters with the amount of paracord in that sling. Get a paracord sling like that. You can put a little compass on it. Again, put some fire cord on it. And that's a good, in my opinion, good survival sling. If you're talking about a survival weapon, whether it's a rifle or a shotgun. They also have the slings, if you're talking about more utilitarian, whether it's rifle or a shotgun have the slings that carry extra cartridges in them and i really like those a couple of companies make them but i do i do like them i'm more like the stock carrier shell holders that go on the stock i also like the ones that go on the sling and i'd hate to admit this but i may or may not have in the past gone out into the wilderness and had my ammo in another place switched pants or switched jackets and gone way way out in the wilderness and realized i didn't have any ammo in my gun if you have it on your sling even if you forgot to load your rifle because you're not supposed to say hunt from a road so in a lot of places it would be illegal for you to walk down the road to get to your hunting spot with a loaded gun ask me how i know i have no intention of hunting even if there's not one in the chamber if there's rounds in your gun 
it might be considered loaded. And if you're walking down a road, get somewhere to hunt. If the rifle slung on your back, you can still get hit for hunting with a hunting from a road or something like that. So if you take the rounds out of your gun, at least you have some on your gun. So you won't make that stupid mistake that I have made in the past where I switched pants or jacket at the last minute and all my rounds were in there and I went out with a rifle with no ammunition. They're on your sling. As far as I know in any jurisdiction, that's not hunting with a load. That's not a loaded gun. It's on the gun, but it's not in the gun. One of those butt cuffs or a sling, I really like those if only for that reason. I really like them for shotguns for a lot of other reasons, which I'll probably get to in you know some more tactical shotgun content. But those kind that carry rounds and the paracord slings for survival, for utility, those are also great. I will give one recommendation on hunting with a sling. I like to have a sling on the gun that I am hunting with. I do not like to use that sling unless I have to. My advice for you is use that sling as little as possible. If you are in fact hunting, I believe the primary place that rifle should be is in your hands. More game is missed. And remember, I was a professional hunter and guide. And I've hunted since I was too young to remember not hunting. More game is missed because you get lackadaisical to put your hands in your pocket and your gun is on a sling, in my opinion. And from would be gained from having the next whiz-bang 6.8 cartridge awesome ballistic coefficient. Much more game is missed because you got lazy and had that rifle on a sling on your shoulder or had your hands in your pocket. And that rifle steps out in a clearing and he's looking right at that rifle. That deer steps out in a clearing right in front of you and your hands are in your pocket or your your rifle's on your, on your shoulder and you can't get to it because he's looking at you. Or if it was in your hands, you could take that snapshot and drop that deer. My advice on the sling, if you are hunting, use that sling as little as needed. Carry that rifle in your hands. Even if you get tired... Even if it sucks, carry it in a manner that you can quickly shoulder it and deploy it. I think that for any length of time, you will take game that you otherwise would have the excuse that, oh, I just didn't have a shot. Well, you would have had a shot if you'd have had that rifle ready at the low ready, at the high ready, something like that, rather than having the rifle slung on your shoulder. Once you shot that elk or that deer, then you can use that sling to put the rifle on your shoulder so you can carry that deer, drag that deer out, or butcher that deer or whatever so that if you're butchering that elk rifle slung on your back you're occupied and you didn't leave it you know 20 yards away on a tree and then the bear comes up slings are useful for a lot of things if you're hunting my advice is have that rifle in your hands with that i think we're going to wrap up the main topic here if you thought this content was good if you thought it was worth supporting if you like this, check out goodshepherdtraining.com. There's a Patreon link on there. If you don't know, Patreon is a way for you to financially support the podcast. These episodes are free for you to listen to, and I like it that way. They're not free to produce and put out. So if you've listened to more than one episode and you've come back and you thought this content was worth listening to and worth your time, hopefully you'll think it's worth a little bit financial support for the fraction of the cost of any rifle sling or the fraction of the cost of a box of ammo you can support this podcast I want you to support because you believe in it because you like the content and you think it's worth the money that's the number one reason but patrons also do get some cool insider content we have a pretty cool group chat on there it's not just me lecturing the guys on what they should or shouldn't do it's a group, it's a virtual tribe where we help each other and everyone in there so far are gun people there are some people in there that have far more knowledge on some things than I do. I'm man enough to admit that. We have, you know, a scout rifle expert on that chat. There might be somebody in that chat that hunts in a state that you do, that you live in, that I have never hunted in. And they may have a lot more knowledge of the way to hunt and laws and regulations there than I do. It's a great resource. It's one of the things on Patreon. If you want to support, again, goodshepherdtraining.com and go to Patreon. If you don't want to give financially, at least, you know, leave her a good review if you thought it was good content. Click some stars, whatever the app you're listening to it on allows. With that as a thanks for staying tuned till the end of the episode, the tactical tip of the day. So we talked about, you know, paracord for making fire, the fire cord that comes out with the flammable stuff in it. 
I think you ought to as a man know how to make a fire and have a way on you to make a fire. But if you have a gun, you have a way to make a fire. And I don't know if you know this already, but you can, with some firearms easier than others, start a fire if you have a firearm. It's called a firearm. It makes fire itself. You can take your cartridge, say to visualize a real common cartridge, let's say you have a 38 Special. You take one of the 38 Special cartridges, you remove the bullet from it, you remove almost all the powder, leave a couple of grains in there, literally a couple of grains. You take, if you don't have anything else, take part of your clothing, a piece of cotton works good, rip off a piece of sock, a piece of shirt, something like that. You wad that up and you put that ram that into the case next to the primer you fire that bulletless cartridge like you would fire another cartridge and then you retrieve that smoldering ember that primer makes fire that's what it does it should light that piece of fabric on fire and you get that smoldering ember and you put it into your tinder may or may not have to blow on it but obviously have your tinder bundle ready probably don't want to fire into your tinder bundle because it may it may work but it may just blow all your tinder all the crap if you're using very small fine you know let's say say the inside scrapings of tree bark or very fine grass dry grass you want to fire that burning ember somewhere else move it into your tinder and blow on it but that's a way to make fire if you have a firearm and no other way to make fire that's your tactical tip of the day if you thought that was worth anything again consider going to good shepherd training and clicking on the Patreon link on there. And that's going to bring us to the tactical verse of the day. The tactical verse of the day is coming in hot from Hebrews 2. That is why we must hold on all the more firmly to the truth we have heard. The message given by angels was shown to be true, and anyone who did not follow it or obey it received the punishment they deserved. How then shall we escape if we pay no attention to such a great salvation. This culture, this world today will try and tell you there's no such thing as truth. Truth is whatever you want it to be. Whatever you feel is right. Whatever you feel is true. But there is an absolute truth. There is truth. It's not what you feel is right. It's not what you feel is true. It's what God says is right and what God says is true. Period. End of sentence. God determines what right and wrong is. Not today's culture. Remember that as you go forth in the week. With that, be strong, be safe, have an abundant life, and have a blessed day.